Okay, Steve. Montana's state constitution is one of the most recently updated in our nation and one that provides rights that others, including the U.S. Constitution, do not. The Constitution was ratified in 1972. This is its 50th anniversary. The state's original 1889 Constitution, yes, yay, passed as a condition of Montana being admitted as a state was a wordy, creaky document that created a weak state government. It denied citizens the right to participate or even to know what government was doing. By 1970, we had decided it was not serving us well. So Montanans voted for a constitutional convention, or a CONCON. 100 delegates were elected, none of which could be existing office holders like mayors or county commissioners. Delegates were farmers and ranchers, housewives, clergy, a beekeeper, a car dealer, a retired FBI agent, a veterinarian, and more. 19 women were elected as delegates a sharp increase over the two women of 159 legislators the year before. I love this picture. Grab your sweater dress and your horn rim glasses and your Buster Brown shoes. We're getting our picture taken. <laughs> before the convention began, delegates made two critically important decisions to minimize partisanship and promote working together. Committees and leadership were evenly shared and delegates sat in alphabetical order instead of Republicans on one side of the aisle, Democrats on the other. Delegates had fierce debates over issues like the right to a clean and healthful environment, which is only in Montana's constitution. Three months after they began, all 100 delegates signed off on the new constitution, March 22, 1972. They didn't all have to sign, but they all did. Next stop, the voters. After months of hard work, Delegate Lyle Monroe went home and put a bumper sticker on his car that said, praise the Lord and pass the Constitution. <laughs> Montana voters barely did. By a razor-thin margin of 2,500 votes of 230,000 cast. Our state constitution grants and protects rights you didn't even know you had. The right to a clean and healthful environment, the right to hunt and fish, both unique to Montana, the right to participate in government, the right to privacy, which is rare and important, among other rights. One of the most important rights enshrined in the 1972 Constitution is the right to know what government is doing. Our own Dorothy Eck fought hard for this right. Prior to that, legislative meetings and critical decisions on whether to pass, amend, or reject bills were closed to the public. Key votes weren't even recorded. Media could not cover meetings. Another fundamental right, the right to privacy. Not many states specifically protect this right. With regard to reproductive rights, the Montana Supreme Court has said that procreative autonomy is protected as a matter of personal privacy. Our state constitution directs our laws, but national law still supersedes state laws and constitutions. For example, in 2004, Montana voters passed an amendment restricting marriage to one man and one woman. But in 2014, the US Supreme Court legalized same-sex marriage. That prevails. There are ways to amend our constitution. One is by citizen initiative, another is by legislative referendum where a bill passes in a legislative session and at the next election asks voters to pass the amendment. You'll see a proposed constitutional amendment on the ballot this November. Our constitution itself requires that Montana voters are asked every 20 years whether to hold another constitutional convention if it doesn't otherwise come up. The next ask is scheduled for 2030. In previous asks, votes to call a new convention have failed. In 1990, just 18% of voters voted for a CONCON, and in 2010, a minority 41% voted yes. A constitutional convention can be called by citizen initiative or by a two-thirds vote of the legislature. That's critically important now. A conservative Republican majority in the Montana legislature is just two votes shy of calling a CONCON. They have 98 seats in the House and Senate, just two more, and they could unilaterally place constitutional amendments or a whole new constitution before voters. 
Generally, in our U.S. Constitution and in state constitutions, civil rights and human rights have been expanded, advanced, granting greater and hard-won rights and freedoms. Some states have on occasion passed restrictions too, like the gay marriage example that I just cited, but those are much rarer. In Montana, conservative lawmakers have big plans to limit or rescind your rights in our state constitution. Representative Derek Skies of Kalispell disparaged Montana's state constitution, calling it a socialist rag that should be replaced. Representative John Fuller of Whitefish said, there is no constitutional right to privacy, no matter what people say, there is no right to privacy. Remember, state representatives swear an oath to support, protect, and defend the U.S. and Montana constitutions upon assuming office. May Nan Ellingson, the youngest delegate in the 1972 CONCON, has replied to those comments, saying, I have actually never heard anybody refer to it as a socialist constitution. I feel very strongly that the right of privacy is not a socialistic idea. If you look at socialistic or communistic governments, one thing that most people lack is privacy. Please elect people who will protect and expand your rights. Vote. Make sure others vote with a critical eye on a candidate's intentions to advance or to restrict your rights with changes to our Constitution. Our Constitution is strong, but it is vulnerable. Please, will you support, protect, and defend it? And on your way out, please take a copy and read it for yourself. We have copies available for everyone. They'll be passed out as you leave. Thank you, Cindy Kristen, for the, who is the brainchild of getting <laughs> copies of the Constitution, U.S. and state of Montana, for everyone. Thank you.